dimension standards. Before an object can be built, we need to know the size and the shape of the object. So that size and shape of the object is communicated through orthographic drawings. And we follow certain standards in our practices. The process of adding information is known as dimensioning. Our whole goal to dimensioning is to communicate the sizes and the shapes as clearly as possible. We'll start with the unit of measurement. In the American industry, the United States, all our dimensions are in inches. In most countries, we use the international system of units, which is based on the meter. And occasionally, we'll use dual dimensioning. That is, when we use both types of measurements on the same drawing. Our reading direction is known as unidirectional. Unidirectional is meant that all text is read from the bottom of the drawing. On the left here, you can see we have unidirectional. Each piece of text is read from the bottom of the drawing. The old standard in mechanical was aligned in which uh, it could either be read from the bottom or aligned with the object's edges. In this case, it was aligned with this surface and this surface. The align method is used still today by the architecture uh, industry. So the mechanical industry is unidirectional, the architecture is aligned. Here's some other examples of unidirectional dimensioning. All the numbers are read from the bottom of the drawing. Over here in aligned, they are read from the bottom or the right side. Types of dimensioning. The best way to do dimensioning is to classify the three types of dimensions. Their overall dimensions, their location and size. The overall tell the manufacturer how big the object is in its blank size, in its stock size. Uh, then the location indicates where the details lie within that object. So if it's a drill hole, where is that drill hole? And then the size dimension is how big that particular detail is or feature is. Let's take a look. Here in this particular part we have the overall which tells us our length. Here we have our overall which tells us our height. Those two give us the basic overall size of the original piece before manufacturing starts. Then we have three different features in this piece. Can you count them? Okay, one is the circle, or the hole in this case. Two is the bevel cut, and three is the notch. So generally we start with the overall first and then we go to location. So for the drill hole, we're locating the center of the drill hole in two different uh, axes. So we locate it each way. That pins down where that circle will be. If I only had one of them, it, the circle would move, or the drill hole would move. In the bevel, we are do a distance method which we measure back from the original corner make a mark and then we put our angular size like 45 degrees for example and over here in the notch we tell how far away from the corner the notch is now our third step is the size in the circle we tell the size of the drill bit for the hole so we give it the size usually in this case it would be the diameter over here in the size we gave it the angle and over here in the size, we gave it the length and the height. So all three of these add up the overall, the location, and the size to be able to dimension an object correctly. So simply put, the overall tells us how big the object is in its length, width, and height. We identify the, the location dimensions where the details are. We are describing the negative mass. Positive mass is the actual stock of material. The negative mass is the manufacturing process that removes that. 
So then we identify the size dimension, which is our negative mass. Let's get some of our terminology straight. This will help us in our AutoCAD um, setting up our dimension styles. First thing we need to look at is the dimension itself is the entire item that makes up the dimension. The dimension line is the horizontal portion of the dimension. It's on both sides here. The extension line is the extents of the object being measured, this vertical section right here. By convention, we'll have a visible gap between the object and the extension line. Typically, that's noted to be about a sixteenth of an inch. We'll also extend our extension line past the dimension line by an eighth inch. You can see that's over here, an eighth inch extension of our extension line past the dimension line. At a minimum, we should have at least three-eighths of an inch on our drawing uh, when it's printed out between the object and our first dimension line. We don't want to crowd the object and smash it right up against the object. We have at least three-eighths of an inch minimum. After that, each dimension, between each dimension line, we want at least an, a quarter inch minimum. We like to keep them orderly and looking the same. So if it's a quarter inch here, quarter inch there. And so see, these are some of the basic rules of our dimensioning terminology. Here's an example of our mechanical dimension style. Now mechanical folks use a terminator or an arrowhead. They use a closed filled arrowhead. They put the number inside of the dimension line, not above it. They cut a gap out of the dimension line and place the number in there. Usually the number will be in decimals. And we have the gap and we have the extension line. So essentially they're placing the number in the dimension line, they're using closed filled arrowheads, and they are in decimal mode. Now, in architecture, they place the value of the dimension above the dimension line. They also use an architectural tick, which is this 45 degree in place of the arrowhead. So, and they use an aligned uh, as well. So the spacing should be at least 3 eighths of an inch from the first item to the, to the dimension. S minimum spacing after that should be a quarter inch. There should be a visible gap to the first extension line. Typically that's at least a sixteenth of an inch. An extension line should at least extend past the dimension line at least a sixteenth of an inch. Many people use an eighth inch. So here are some of our basic terminologies. Uh, just some of our definitions and then more of our terminologies. So in review, uh, dimension styles are based on the industry that they're used in or the company standards. Typically there's a standard for mechanical dimension style and a standard for architectural dimension style. Each are based on the conventions of that particular industry.